We have made it to our penultimate bike for our value trail bike head-to-head -head test, and that is the Ibis Ritmo AF. The Ibis Ritmo AF GX build lists for $2,999 and is the longest travel bike on test with 147 mils in the back paired with 160 millimeter fork. It has a 65 degree head tube angle and our size large has a 475 millimeter reach, 435 millimeter chain stays and a 1237 millimeter wheelbase. Now it's worth noting that this bike right here is actually the Dior build, which is a few hundred dollars more. Uh, when we reached out to Ibis, they initially were gonna get us the GX and I guess they ran out of inventory in the size that we needed. So they sent us the Dior. Um, really the only difference between these bikes is they swapped the Dior drivetrain for uh, a GX, which in my opinion might even be an upgrade, even though it's cheaper. Like at least for, comparable. Think, it's definitely yeah, not a downgrade. It's comparable, but definitely definitely a preference thing. Yeah, for sure. They're not a downgrade. Really, really good drive trains. And then they swap out the brakes, they get the DB8s. And both that GX drivetrain and the DB8 brakes are components that we have um, on other bikes in this test and we haven't had any issues. So keep that in mind. We're not exactly gonna talk about the brakes or drivetrain on this bike, just because that's not in the actual sub $3,000 price category, but everything else is. So let's get into it. What'd you guys think of this bike? I was really excited for this bike being the Ritmo AF, um, mainly because so many people have this yeah. thing and it, it gets all sorts of good reviews. It has a cult following, man. Like it we were just does. looking, this bike's been out for five years. Um, it's the one of the older frame designs on test, but people still rave about it. And actually, Ibis just released the new carbon version of this bike. So I'd imagine that the AF version is gonna be updated soonish, which will be super awesome. But please, I mean, this doesn't feel outdated. It's geometry compared to most like 150-ish mil bikes might be a little bit more um, conservative. It, it did have a unique trail feel that right. we'll talk about in a little bit, but uh, didn't feel, yeah. Yeah. Outdated, One outdated. thing why I was so excited to ride it was exactly that. I was like, it's it's been around and it's so popular. Yeah. Uh, but for me personally, I wasn't a huge fan of the bike. Yeah. I, I didn't like it as much as the the other options we rode. Um, and for me, it, it felt uh, it felt a bit twitchy. Yeah. And it really surprised me. Yeah. Because I really like the build on this. I love the components that are in it. But something about it just, I didn't get along with it. You um, used the word squirrely. And um, to be honest, like, it felt squirrely to me too, which is why I liked it. Okay. And that's a really interesting thing. And I think yeah. this bike has always been praised for it's sort of like, you know, like play bike kind of tendency. And right. I think that came through maybe even more than we thought. But yeah, for a long travel bike, it definitely doesn't feel right. quite like you'd think, I guess. Yeah, the, mo the most planted in confidence. Yeah. Sorry. It's got the second shortest chain stays and the uh, lowest, if not the second lowest bottom bracket, or sorry, the, uh, the highest or the second highest bottom bracket. Interesting. And so that translates to a bike that like, you know, and, and we haven't talked about this much, but personal bike preference plays in a lot on these. And I like right. bikes with short chain stays and high bottom brackets because I feel like BMX bikes. And this bike had that, which I think is why I enjoyed it. I describe the feeling riding it as being almost surfy. You almost steer it from yeah. the back of the bike um, yeah. or like your powder, like snowboarding and powder or something like that. But it was a very different feel than very the other like than everything lower, else lower, more neutral bikes with slightly longer chainstays. And right? I'm quite the opposite from you. I just couldn't get along with, yeah. uh, with the shorter chainstay option. Yeah. Like it just, something felt off about it. Yeah. It kind of felt like more of a slope style bike. Yeah. And I was, I was trying to push it like a trail bike. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this one just wasn't doing it for me. I still had a lot of fun. It was, it was a really cool bike. It was great to experience. It was fun to ride the DW link. Yeah. Climbing with this thing, you had traction. Uh, you have more traction than any other bike you had. Yeah, it, it, it was just, active when you wanted it to be, and yeah. then it was still efficient, like on the non-technical parts. But but yeah, I mean exactly. the DW Link suspension, it's it's famous for a reason, and exactly. it just it climbs really well. And even on the sense, I think it has some some nice characteristics where it does you know have that it's a little, it has that nice mid stroke where you kind of can pop off of it, but you can right. also you know send this thing. A and, lot of people usually talk about pedal bob when they ride full suspensions. Yeah. Or they don't want to be feeling like sure. you're bouncing while you're pedaling it. This one didn't have it. Yeah. This one yeah. felt very good at pedaling. Yeah. I will say when, when I did, did get up and sprint on this bike, it felt great, but the bike did creak on okay. me. I don't know if anybody else got that. I didn't notice it, but I remember you mentioning that. Yeah, on the first the first ride we did on this, I noticed as I was grinding my way up the hill, because yeah. it's, you know, 
It has a lot more going on sure. in the suspension. With the DW system, there's the a lot of DW link, and... you've got a, one in the back and then the yoke too. So yeah. there's there's a lot more moving pieces with yeah. this bike as opposed to any of the other bikes that we, right. we looked at. So yeah. more pivots, more bolts, more points to creak. Uh, but one thing I will give it praise for is the uh, absurdly low standover. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. for being a size large, I'm the shortest on test here, yeah. so I got overruled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I found this bike to be probably the most comfortable in terms of standover. Yeah. Uh, versus the rest of the bikes on test. The overall fit and finish is really nice. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you uh, it has those Blackbird wheels, which are nice, have decently high engagement. And you said that you can make those higher engagement you by upgrading, upgrading them, them, right? Yes. Yeah. So Blackbird is their in-house, Ibis's in-house component brand. Yeah. This one actually has really good tires on. It does. Yeah. I, that uh, Asagai paired with the DHR2, and yeah, they're both EXO Plus. Yeah, components are yeah. great. But I think the biggest letdown for me was the Z1 fork. Z1 coil fork. Yeah, the specifically, coil. sorry, the yeah. Z1 coil fork specifically, because it's a little bit too good at its job. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that lively, <laughs> poppy feel that everybody talks about with these bikes, yeah. I think the life is sucked out of the bike mm. by that fork because you are too well planted. Interesting. And uh, the fork is a little bit too linear through its travel, which Again, that's why you have a coil fork. Yeah. Um, I think it's an interesting check, uh, spec choice for the bike specifically um, because your GX build does get this fork as well. Yeah. The rest of the bike, completely adequate. It's stiff as a board going through corners. You can really rail on this thing totally. and just give it the beans. And after, My, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, after all the bikes we just talked about, this one's available in bike shops. Yes, yes. So yes. you can take it out for a demo. Yeah. You can go ride it where a Canyon, uh, the Polygon, you're really just listening to us on this one. Yeah. Uh, but this one, you could take it out and ride it. Yeah. And Whatever. with that in mind, like the, you know, again, yeah. we already talked about this, you know, would have a, a different drivetrain, but still comparable, a different brake, but still comparable. Insane value for this oh, yeah. not being a direct to consumer bike. We, we've Wild. got, yeah. yeah. Wild oh, value. Yeah, when I, you compare I, that to the Rocky Mountain, the components between these two bikes, and this is just a hundred dollars more, right. is night and day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but the ride feel was polarizing. So let's, let's finish up and just talk about who we would recommend this bike for. Uh, this one would be for, I would say, the, the, the cyclists that kind of know what they're doing. Even though it is a budget bike and our budget bike shootout, it's still kind of in that, that next tier. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't even call, I mean, I would call this a budget bike sheerly due to price. There's, Ibis went all out yeah. and just kind of, you know, said, hey, we're going to build a bike for somebody who wants to shred hard. Yeah. We mentioned already this frame is on the older side of things, and I think in some ways the geometry is a bit comes from maybe three or four years ago. You know, lots of bikes nowadays are getting longer rear ends, getting lower bottom brackets, getting slacker head to bangles. And if you kind of like that um, more maneuverable feel, maybe not quite as quick of a bike, uh, then it's cool that this is still an option. And you might want to get your hands on it quick because if it's anything like the uh, new Ritmo, it's probably going to be getting longer, lower and slacker. Uh, so pick one of these up while you can, if you want it. <laughs> yeah. The one question I didn't get answered through this whole thing. Yeah. I don't know what AF stands for. Aluminum frame. Okay. Absolutely fun. I was gonna say an absolute freak. Yeah, if you have yeah. any uh, <laughs> ideas in the comments for what AF stands for, put it down there. Yeah, Absolute freak is pretty good. Absolute yeah. freak. Yeah. Aluminum frame, that's, it's so simple. Yeah, it's yeah. too boring, man. Didn't even think about it, yeah, so. Yeah, that's what bikes. it stood for. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, the aluminum frame, I like the fact that Ibis, who has notoriously built nothing but carbon bikes for the last forever and a day, yeah. Um, is building a value forward aluminum frame, just shred missile. Yep. And I love it. I'm yep. here for it. Yep. It might not be the bike for me, but I can't dog this bike for much other cool. than, you know, what I don't agree with. Yeah. But I think realistically, this bike is such a stellar value for somebody who wants to go ride the bike park, wants to go party, do party laps yeah. with their buddies or, you know, just ride a bike hard. Yeah. Cool. Well, that is we the Ibis. We have just one more bike that we are talking about. That's sitting right behind me here, so make sure you don't miss that. Till then, remember that bikes are for everyone. Have fun out there.